Hey, hello friends and welcome to Retro Portal Studio and in this video we're going to be taking a look at solving an annoying problem with the Flutter web apps and that is the blank screen that is presented to the user before the page is loaded. So right now I'm in the same theming app that we created in the previous tutorial. So let's run this on web. Now when the app runs you can see this blank white screen before the project actually runs. This gives a poor impression of the app to the user even before it opens. Well, in this video, we'll be solving this issue by adding some additional HTML and CSS code to the Flutter web app structure. And this is how the solution will look like. You can see that there is a nice loading indicator before the page actually loads. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so right now I'm in the same theming project. And in a Flutter project with web support, you'll always have this web folder. So all the changes that we need to make in this tutorial will be in this web folder. Well, the first thing that I'll do here in this web folder is create a new folder and name this assets. And in this folder, we need to add a graphic that can be a GIF, PNG or JPEG image that we need to show to the user as the page is loading. In my case, I'll add a loading GIF and you can see that this is a flying astronaut. And if instead of this media, you want to show a custom web effect to the user, such as a keyframe animation, you can skip this step. Now, once this is added, let's go to the index.html file and add this image to the body of the page. For this, I'll go down to the body tag and just after the body tag starts, I'll create a new div and I'll give it an ID of loading indicator. And I'll also give it a class of container because this will contain our loading image. Now, as the child element, I'll also add an image tag and I'll give it a class of indicator. I also have to give it a source property, which is going to be the path for this loading GIF. So I'll write assets and in this, we have this loading GIF. Now, it is important that you add these elements just after the body tag starts and before anything else is added to the body because we want this loading indicator to be behind our Flutter app. Let's open the terminal and try to run this app. So I'll write Flutter dev, which is a profile that I use for development purposes. In your case, you'll just write Flutter run d chrome. And once the app runs, you can see that we have a loading indicator, but that is at the top left corner. And the reason behind that is that we have not yet created the CSS classes for container and indicator. So let's do that now. If you're finding this video useful, consider supporting RetroPortal Studio via this thanks button just below the video and make sure to like the video and subscribe to RetroPortal Studio for more quality Flutter content. For adding the CSS, I'll go just above the closing head tag and here I'll add a new style element. And in this first, I'll add the container class and that will look something like this. Now in this container class, you can see that we're setting the width and height and this VW means the view width. That means the width is being set to 100% of the view width. In the same way, the height is being set to 100% of the view height. Now to center the image, which is the child of the div, which has this container class, we're setting this display property to flex. Now you can think of this flex property as a row or a column. For a row, the main axis is the X axis and for a column, the main axis is the Y axis. And by default, this flex is having the axis of X. So in this case, you can consider this flex to be like a row. And these two properties are to set the alignment of elements for this flex. So the justify content property is for the main axis, just like the main axis alignment property of the row. And in this case, we're setting this to center. And in the same way, the align items property is just like the cross axis alignment property of the row. And we're also setting this to center. So basically, we're setting the container to cover the entire page with this width and height, and we're using this flex properties to center its children. Now, let's add the indicator class. For this, we only need one property, and that is the width. So we're setting the width of the image to be 50% of the view width. I'll save the app, and at this point, I'll open up the terminal and run the app once again. And as the app runs, you can see that we have the indicator in the center of the page. But let me run the app once again. Now with this loading indicator, you can see that we have these scroll bars. They come up first and then they go away, but it's a better idea if they don't show up at all. The reason they're coming up is because in the container, we have set the width and height to cover the entire view width and view height. To solve this problem, we can go to the body and here we can add a style and set the overflow property to hidden. You can see that there are a bunch of other properties like visible, hidden, clip, scroll, and auto. In the case of hidden, we won't see any scroll bars. So just to test this, I'll run the app once again. And now when the app runs, you can see that there are no scroll bars. 
Okay, so now we're successfully showing a loading indicator in the center of the page. But when the page successfully loads, we're not really removing that loading indicator. So let's say in some case, the application stops resizing and the user expands the window. Now in this case, the loading indicator will show behind the actual UI of the app. Now this is one scenario and there can be many other cases when the loading indicator will be visible to the user even when the app is successfully loaded on the screen. So what we have to do is we have to remove the loading indicator after the page has successfully loaded. So I'll close this app for now and I'll go back to the index.html. So what we need to do is we need to add a custom script which waits until the page is loaded and then after a few seconds it looks for this loading indicator and if it finds one it removes this from the document. For this I'll go just above the closing body tag and just above this closing body tag I'll add a new script tag and in this I'll use window.onload. To this we need to assign a new function. Now the problem with this is that even when the page is successfully loaded it takes a bit of time to actually get the page running on the browser. So for this we have to wait a few seconds even after the page is loaded. And for this we'll use setTimeout and this is a function and in this for the first argument we need to pass a handler and this is going to be a function. And for the second argument we need to pass in the time and this is going to be in milliseconds, so I'll pass in 10,000, which is exactly 10 seconds. Well, in this set timeout function, we first need to get the loading indicator. For this, I'll create a new variable, and I'll name this loading indicator. And I'll put this equal to document.getElementById, and in this, I'll pass in the ID of the element, that is loading underscore indicator. And then we'll check if the loading indicator is not null, and if this is not null, we'll use loading indicator dot remove. Now, with this JavaScript, we're waiting for the page load to complete. And when the page is successfully loaded, we wait for 10 more seconds. And then we get this loading indicator. And if the loading indicator is not null, then we remove that particular loading indicator. This is quite simple. So I'll go to the terminal and run the app. Now, as the app runs, I'll open up the inspect window and I'll go to the elements. And here we have the loading indicator. And if we wait for 10 seconds, you can see that the loading indicator is gone. Let's take a look at this one more time. So I'll run the app once again. And as the app runs, I open up the inspect window. And in this, we go to the elements. And here is the loading indicator. And we wait for a few more seconds. And you can see that the loading indicator is gone. So with this, you've seen that how easy it is to add a loading indicator to the Flutter web apps. You can also check out the Medium article for this tutorial, which you can go through at your own pace via the links in the description below. So I hope you found this video useful and if you do, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and also consider supporting Retro Portal Studio on Patreon or buy me a coffee via the links in the description below. See you next time. Peace.